Head over to MiniatureMarket.com. They have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Whistle Mountain. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be hanging around the mountain, listening to the whistle from the trains, and we're going to be building scaffolding. And then on that scaffolding we're going to be building cool machines to run, gain points. Today we're talking about Whistle Mountain, the completely standalone follow-up to Whistle Stop from Bezier Games. Let me show you how it's played, I'll see you on the other side. Now each player starts with three airships and a player board, so you have a hot air balloon, a blimp, and a dreadnought. You'll be placing onto the grid or machines to gather all adjacent resources from scaffolding, like coal, iron, gold, and water. But you'll also activate the machine's abilities that you're on and ones that you're adjacent to, like the black pointer getting you coal and a point, or automation allowing you to spend an iron to build another machine or scaffolding. Now each player gets their own player board and a place to hold all their resources, and the resources are really cool in this game, they're not boring cubes. Everyone also starts with a special ability like this one says, anytime you move a worker, like we showed you as we uh, you know, moved one onto a scaffolding, you can get a card. Cards are cool things in the game because they allow you to use them on your turn. Like for example, this one would gain you two whistles, and some of them do all sorts of different things. So on your turn, you'll be placing your different workers, which are those three airships, again, onto the grid as I showed you previously and getting resources and points or sometimes to specific spots and spending resources like in this case you get one of these three scaffolding for free but you could pay one or two whistles to get two or three of those those are going to be ones that you're going to be able to place later you might go here to pay for an upgrade it's on the tile like pay two whistles and then for the rest of the game you can spend a whistle to get a point or spend four coal and now coal is wild for you or spend two whistles and every time your worker gets promoted off to the side like I showed you before you get an additional rent and reward. Plus, all of these get you points at the end of the game as well. Now, once you get one of those upgrades, it goes on your player board. You can hold up to six of these, and essentially you're trying to build this comboing power of different abilities that work well together and with your starting ability throughout the game. Now, you can go and get cards that will do different things. You get one for free when you go here, or you can spend one or two resources to get two or three cards. And again, you can play these cards on your turn. They do different things like spending two coal in order to get a, uh, you know, a machine from the small market. Now, that card comes in useful because players need to spend two or three coal to get one of these in normal worker placement style because you can go on the edge of the board there but if it's full you could use that card as i just showed you to use this even if it's full and you don't have to place a machine it's sort of like an extra uh you know action that turn and it doesn't matter if this is full or not because if it's full you can't go there but normally you'd be going here spending coal and getting some of these small machines that you'll be able to place later as i showed you and there's places to go to spend like three iron to get medium machines. This one will get you five points when you when you, basically you place on it or adjacent to it. You'll get 12 points for building it. Now this one allows you to, when you activate it, spend a gold to get a card. This one just gets you a card. And again, you're always getting points when you build them, but they're also giving you abilities when you put one of your workers on it or next to it. So here's the large machines. You go here, pay three iron and two coal. And again, when you build these, you'll get points, like eight points and a, an upgrade, 10 points in, a, in a, you know, uh, another machine, a small one, 16 points in any two resources. But also when you activate them, they do different things, like trading in one of your upgrades for another one from the market, or spending a coal to get a small machine. Or in this case, the whistles aren't wild resources. Usually they're wild, but instead you can spend a whistle to act as to, to gain any two resources. Now normally you're placing one of your workers from your player board out onto the board as I showed you the different spots, but you can bring them all back and then you have a new action and that's how you actually build things and move workers and such because when you bring them back you can get a free build and that's building either one of the scaffolding that you may have gotten earlier or maybe one of the machines. You can build it as I showed you earlier, but you can build two more times spending a water for each time doing that, but then you can either move a worker from your barracks or rescue one from the whirlpool that you showed you earlier. So this is when you do those types of buildings, when you pull all your workers back, you still get to do things and this is when some of the most important actions happen. Now the cool thing is, is as you build, when you build machines above this line, it sort of triggers a clock for the game because as this goes, the water rises. When the water rises, it's going to send anybody that it hits into the whirlpool, which again is minus five if they're not rescued from here at the end of the game, but also submerging the different machines. So this one has submerged this machine, it's no longer active. And as more and more machines get built, this water is gonna rise and rise and rise. And once it gets, uh, once all the workers from the barracks are completely gone, that triggers sort of the end of the game. 
So the cool thing about this game is trying to figure out which worker to place, where to get the different things. Like this one gets you everything that it touches. So it's a very interesting way to, you know, look at worker placement. That's pretty much the game at a high level. Uh, you'll just be playing like that to the end and whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. All right, Whistle Mountain. Now, first of all, I loved Whistle Stop. That was a pick up and deliver game. They had all these cool abilities that you combo together and I loved it. This one I might like even better. Uh, first of all, cool resources. I'm glad to see Bezier, you know, with, the, with, the, with their good production, not cheaping out on the, re on the, the resources. Because so often these days, still we still see many games with cubes in them and they're boring and that's old school. And now you have these cool resources. So I like that, not cubes. You've got the whistle, you got the coal, you got the iron, you got the gold water it looks cool i'm glad that they're pushing the envelope of, of other people that are, hey if you want to keep up and you want to you want your games to look good can't do just basic cubes anymore so i like that they did that this is definitely my favorite part of this game as it's such a unique twist on worker placement sure you've got spots that you're gonna get blocked from other players sure there's you know spots that are already predetermined that give you certain actions and you turn in resources to do things and that part's sort of the same but the whole twist of like you're building this board with the scaffolding and the machines and the resources and you're building as you build this board you're building an infinite amount of places to go with your workers so every time you play the game it's going to be different and you, sometimes you're placing the scaffolding in spots that you're like oh this is going to be good for me later but someone else might go there and get those resources all that at once so it's really cool that the players literally are creating the worker placement spots as you play the game it's my favorite part to this it's such a unique twist in resource man in and worker placement that I it's it made re, worker placement feel new again to me and I like that I like placing the polyomino scaffolding for points trying to find the, the best place to put it to gain the most points but also thinking forward for those worker placement spots as I mentioned I love comboing the different upgrades you start with a, a specific special ability and you find upgrades to kind of go with that strategy and you go down certain strategies with the different upgrades and it kind of like focuses you and gives you some different things to do and give you some points at the end i like the comboing of those powers getting all those different cards is cool too because they do all sorts of different things and you got to use the right card at the right time like many of them allow you to do things as if you were at a spot but hey you can play a card on a turn so you're not wasting one of your workers to do it and if the place is full already well that's okay you can play the card and do that action when you really want to I like that aspect, having those cards in there. Uh, I like that you're moving the workers to be promoted by machines and you're moving them and you're like, oh, I'm gonna put them here so that they can get promoted over here to try to get this award. Or I'm gonna wait a little longer, wait for someone else to build scaffolding a little higher so I can get them up a little higher, which will get me more points when they get promoted. I like that you're sort of setting that up in advance, trying to figure out what you're gonna do. Uh, the machine abilities are really cool. I like how it sort of goes, you know, small, medium, large, and they get bigger and better, harder to place as they get bigger, but they're more powerful and they have you know a lot more points and I like that anybody can use a machine it's like oh I built this machine this huge one I get 14 points it has a really cool cool ability and then the next player goes I'm gonna go there and use it oh and by the way get all these other resources too I like that uh, and it has a cool sort of end game timer which is the water that also has a cool function of like as you build higher and higher the water comes so you're under tension to kind of move your workers along and watch out for the different uh, submerged machines overall I really loved this game uh, it's definitely uh, again I might even like it more than whistle stop which I really loved uh, anything negative uh, there's a decent amount of iconography to learn uh, but I will say the rule book is fantastic it literally has pages for the upgrades the cards the abilities all that stuff you could literally look up the card name that's alphabetized and see exactly what that card does so the first time or two that you play it you're going to be going back to that book quite often looking at the iconography but the iconography all makes sense and it's clean uh, and after you've played it a couple times you probably won't need it anymore but it is a little bit of a learning curve to get through all the iconography in the game uh, but other than that i really love this game and i loved it so much it's getting a saxophone serenade which means it's staying in my gaming library which doesn't happen often these days because when I get one uh, I get rid of one so there you have it now it has been Whistle Mountain this has been the Game Boy Geek breaking down barriers growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you'll love hit it <laughs>
During checkout, use promo code GAMEBOYGEEK10 and you'll save 10% on the price of your games. On the Lucky Ducks Game Shop, you'll find exciting new releases such as Tang Garden, which I recently reviewed, and the link is below, and It's a Wonderful World, as well as award-winning games like Chronicles of Crime, which is one of my favorite cooperative games of all time, and Vikings Gone Wild. So why not visit LuckyDuckGames.com now and find something new to play? Thank you.